I have to admit that I am a bit nervous and not because I have never done this before. I have. It's just the fact that I have to, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep into account time management and also do justice to our effort for one year now. And <clears throat> it's very hard to do both at the same time, but I will try. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it. I tried to sketch a few words, but I, I'm more of a fan of show, not tell. So we are going to show you right now and sometime later uh, some opinions shared with us by certain people who directly experienced our changes. And yes, the changes that we uh, overtook meant moving from traditional teaching, face-to-face -face teaching to online teaching, because as probably everyone knows already, there is a pandemic around us. That's what we had to do. Uh, nobody uh, offers anything to us because we are a private institution, so we can't expect things for granted, so we had to work for them. And I'm going to refer to Gileta's presentation for a little bit. Uh, I think we expanded the digital immigrant base with quite a lot of people because traditional teaching, as you probably expect, involves only printing certain things from time to time. Well, we managed to do something truly amazing, and I'll let the parents say it to you. Um, we have here some testimonials, uh, some comments received on Facebook or face-to-face -face or some other uh, media. Um, every comment is positive or very positive, and these are just a few of them. Uh, they congratulate us for our efforts of maintaining the children's safety, our safety, but more than above all else, continuing the teaching process, because in the end, we are a school. Um, now, today's presentation is structured in three main parts. I am going to talk to you about change management. Uh, my colleague, Mihaela, will delve into our model of change and also the strategies that we implemented. And finally, Elsa will tell you a little bit uh, about our training sessions and the enormous amount of work behind them. Now, to start, I think this looks familiar to pretty much all of you, right? Deserted cities, empty streets, no people in a 500 meter radius, every pub, every church, every school is closed. But somewhere in Yash, Romania, uh, something was going on. And mind you, this video is realized is produced one week after lockdown was instated in Romania. So seven days after everyone was barricaded inside their homes with their laptops on, this was happening. And that's just a little part of what happened because the pattern was probably the same everywhere. There were a few hints that something was happening and then all of a sudden it was all around us and then there was nothing we could do. Or was there? Because we had the force, I don't know, the inspiration to think ahead. We started making some changes and these changes start years ago. We pride, pride ourselves in with uh, implementing new things. Um, among other things, we have the only Confucius classroom uh, 
in these parts uh, where children can study Chinese. Uh, as you can probably see in the same building, there are different department, departments, kindergarten, primary, secondary school. There is also a language center, uh, a projects department, Erasmus Plus projects, you may be familiar with them. And we have always strived to adapt and use new technologies. We have invested heavily in smart boards, laptops, projectors. Uh, we sent our school managers and school staff to participate in conferences just like this one, you know, for enlightenment and fresh ideas. But the thing is that there was not enough critical mass for change. There was not a triggering event to make it all happen. All the pieces of the puzzle were there, but we had no, no puzzle. Um, so all of a sudden we had to change. The change was that we had to teach from a distance, teach online. Uh, there are many sides to changing. You can simply turn on your computer and expect to do a good job, especially if you scarcely do it before this. So we had on one hand to develop a set of specific plans and actions to achieve the change and to use our available resources effectively. Uh, and also to apply a systematic approach to helping staff be successful, approach the people side of teaching and project work and everything else. We had to prepare and support our employees, uh, establish the necessary steps for change, uh, develop and share knowledge, co-create knowledge, uh, continuously monitor every process and uh, adapt to change. Uh, now, um, our case was a happy case. We are successful, as you've probably seen from the parents. They are very happy with our efforts. And there is something, again, later on coming, uh, another testimonial part. But not every institution has been so successful. Uh, I personally know of school institutions which halted their teaching process for an entire semester, which I assess could be disastrous to someone's academic life. So how did we do it? Well, to tell you how we did it, we first need to take a look at some settings, some circumstances, like for example, low morale, people are depressed, people are disoriented, they have no idea where, what's the next step. Uh, change agents are not respected. And in terms of the pandemic, there were institutions not sure if you know of any, who decided to continue their work face-to-face -face despite the circumstances. We decided to protect ourselves and the children. Uh, Risk-taking is discouraged. Leaders inflexible in their attitudes and little outside support. All these settings could drastically influence change fail. As for change strategies, uh, they may be unaccompanied by practical training. They are simply stated, displayed, and nothing else. Uh, they are not adapted to developing circumstances or to the local context because I'm not going to spoil our motto, but you will see it later on. We had to adapt the things that we learned by researching. We couldn't simply take and use it as it was. And finally, innovations may not be seen as beneficial or simply can't be understood or uh, inadequately resourced. In our case, we identified our major blocking points, our possible downfalls. Uh, one of them was our staff implementing the change, right? Moving on to online teaching. Therefore, you have a batch of people who are untrained in the new skills required. Uh, and we had to think of that and find solutions, which we did. Uh, also need for support, encouragement and feedback from change promoters. And not only, change, feed, feedback from our parents was very important. Feedback from our students was equally important. We have had peer school institutions who came to visit after the lockdown was uh 
was uh, retracted and they they were surprised at our progress they were i think some of them actually mentioned that they couldn't uh, they didn't believe it could be possible to do this in these circumstances um uh, proud to say that we did and we gave them an example um the essence of management uh, uh, in the context of change is, to sum it up, to create the strategies that will help people adopt and do things differently. You know, it, adaptation has been the very nature of humankind since early stages. Uh, so now is no different except more modern settings. Uh, also think and feel differently. Uh, and that covers both the physical and the psychic version of the story. Now, about models and strategies, my colleague Mihaela will give you some more details. And then Elsa will provide you with some other uh, information about our efforts. Mihaela, if you please. Uh, thank you, Christy. Uh, it was very important for us to find a model. And in all this process of finding a model for change management, we always have this in mind to uh, think globally and act locally. I mean, to find something that applied to, um, to other people in the world, but to adjust all we have found to our institution. So in the chaos created by the pandemics, uh, we had to find a path a model for this change management and it was a, a change on the go. We um, actually didn't have time to wait. So we found two important models. The first one, we are very lucky to do that. And the first one we took into consideration was Cotter's model designed by John Cotter, a world renowned change expert. Um, you can see all the steps um, in the change model of John Cotter, but I want to highlight one thing. In Cotter's model, the first step is to create urgency. In our case, it's very important the urgency was present because it was the pandemic and it forced us to change and get things moving. Um, then we took another model. Uh, which was the ADCAR model. Another important model, ADCAR is an abbreviation and it stands for awareness, that means leading people to see the need for change, then desire, instilling the desire for change, um, knowledge, which means providing employees with the information or um, skills they need to achieve the change, the ability which means applying uh, all the knowledge and skills they had to bring about the change, and reinforcement, which making, uh, means making sure that people will continue, and this is very important, to continue to use the new methods. And this is how we designed our personal model, which proved to be a success. We created our model, um, let's say, I should say cold-bloodedly because we had to change everything before anything terrible happened. We reversed a little bit the order of ADCAR model because we had the knowledge and the ability we uh, previously, but we needed to be aware of the necessity of change. Uh, well, this awareness also triggered the desire because it, the desire was created in the urgency of change. Um, a next step, a very important step, was building the team for this change management. That means finding um, the influential people within our institution um, whose power came from um, a variety of sources. That means uh, sources like job title, status, expertise, um, and more imp most importantly, uh, who had to convince people that change is necessary. Um, that means getting the right people on the team. We also got the right people on the team by selecting a mix of uh, skills, knowledge and commitment. 
We focused on the vision of change um, that could help everyone understand what we have to achieve. Uh, when we speak about the vision, we um, have in mind the values that are central to the change and the strategy to implement the change. Um, and we took into account not only the strategy, this is very important, we, we also took into account creativity, um, emotional connect, and also obviously objectives. Communication was very important in our uh, in this process because we uh, al always we have always encouraged people to um, openly and frequently communicate regarding all the stages of uh, of the change. The last two parts of our models are extremely important, um, not because of the plan, but because we we speak about human human about people and people are very important never giving up our model for change management also aimed at encouraging people to continue the process of change regardless of the obstacles because there were a lot um, this um, this implied support guidance uh, and also uh, most above all collaboration we took action to uh, quickly remove barriers. Uh, and barriers are not only human, but also most of the time technical and not only. And also to implement feedback in a very constructive way. Feedback was always present. And reinforcement is uh, a critical component of successful change because um, reinforcement encompasses the mechanisms and uh, the approaches so that the new stays in place. Of course, reinforcement can be extremely difficult um, from the change management perspective, because once a change uh, is finished, we are often already moving to the next change. Uh, and we have to acknowledge this fact and we have to acknowledge um, the tendency to simply move on. Uh, we have to build the necessary mechanism to reinforce a change. This is how we designed our EuroEdge model. And I want to show you something very interesting. This is um, a coat of arms we designed in one of our pedagogical trainings. It is very important because it represents a projection of what we want EuroEd to be. Uh, there were four questions asked to our colleagues and they all answered. Uh, the questions were like uh, a professional value in which I believe, um, what recommends me as a teacher, what I most appreciate about a student, and uh, finally Euroad vision and I. Uh, the words are in Romanian, but um, the, the biggest the words that um, appear more often uh, can be easily translated by everyone. It's about creativity, empathy, professionalism, quality, flexibility. These are the key words uh, that define us and that uh, made all this process of change management a successful one. And now I would like to show you some of the strategies we used in implementing our uh, change management model. We designed uh, 16 strategies, but I'm not going to, I'm going to highlight only a few of them I found uh, mo most important. The first one, let's say discussion with colleagues was extremely important because we elicited what they knew and what they wanted to know. Um, and we discussed and had an agreement on the changes we want uh, to implement, um, as well as the different steps um of the organizational change plan um and building school teams meant um getting the right people on the team as i said before but also strengthening relationship with partners and by partners i mean parents most important um parents were an extreme were the best actors i mean the best partners in this project uh, also, other partners were IT companies, uh, the press, um, the regional inspectorate. 
Well, the vision we mentioned before and uh, defining goals, um, the goals were clearly explained all the time. Then, uh, Christy, if you want to move. Okay. Well, we plan the steps, having in mind a timeline and change uh, milestones identified so that uh, the process would be a success. And communicating. communicating communication was not only uh, related to the change management, but also we um, openly discussed fears and conflicts so that we could overcome all the difficulties and resolve conflicts. When it came to, uh, comes to empowering colleagues, um, I would like to point out that our colleagues were given the freedom to make their own decisions and implement their own ideas, which uh, later on resulted in happiness and satisfaction, uh, and uh, obviously in uh, employee productivity. Another important strategy is co-creation of knowledge, which is uh, collaborative of collaborative nature, and which involves uh, knowledge sharing and creation, because it brings together different groups of people who um, collect opinions and ideas, and then uh, create or bring together fresh and innovative concepts all the time. Uh, this is also um, reflected in um, the learning community. Um, when we speak about bringing everybody aboard, I want, um, I really want to say that the cre great credit in this belongs to our leaders. And it's very important that because they knew how to inspire us all and uh, how to and knew how to make us embrace the change. It was of utmost importance. All the goals, all the uh, term goals were we set small goals, sorry, uh, like like learning in chunks, Sm set small goals and achievable parts. So it was very easy to understand what we had to do. And of course, never giving up, as I uh, mentioned before in the in the model when I presented the model. Um, the last chunk of uh, strategies, the last, uh, Christy, would you please? Okay. Um, I would like to say that. Uh, community learning has turned us into a learning community uh, with common goals and we worked all the time we worked um, extremely um, in a, an extremely transparent way because being transparent at every step of the change management uh, helped us build trust and connection and I left a little bit training and reassuring our team um, the last even if it's the 15th on our uh, slide because uh, training is what Elsa is going to pre present you it's a very big part of our change management thank you Elsa The microphone. Unmute, sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mihaela. Now, can you hear me? <laughs> I wanted to ask you, but forgot about it. Yes. So we thought globally and acted locally, always having the big picture in mind and our goal. Do you remember our goal? To survive but to survive by our standards that is maintaining and improving the quality of our services so we acted locally by preparing everything in detail we identified our colleagues needs and that has been a constant of our actions we set the objective to meet these needs and our actions were based on rigorous work. It was challenging work in tune with what was going on in the world. So if I were to condense our work at the time, I would use action and reflection verbs. So we participated in workshops, webinars, we read articles, forums, blogs, 
And then we created the content, our content. We chose digital instruments, build the prototype of a live session where interaction and collaboration played a significant role. The atmosphere was also important. Everybody contributed, felt empowered and valued. And feedback, as mentioned before, was a measure of our work but also an instrument to further development. So we uh, developed two training courses, a technical and a pedagogical one. Thank you, Christy. Right. OK, so the uh, technical training course aim at enabling teachers how to use and be comfortable with the online environment through Google Classroom, live sessions through Zoom and apps to digitize activities and transfer everything that was once face to face to transfer it online. So our tech team produced lots of tutorials. So we have three slides only with their tutorials there. Uh, they are all on YouTube and in Romanian, and they are, you know, tailored, customized for our teachers. And they are also accompanied by uh, activities, hands-on activities and tests, so that our teachers uh, can also test their skills acquired. All uh, right, now we move on to the pedagogical training course. Yes, the pedagogical training course went deeper into the online learning teaching processes. So it went deeper into the how and why to use certain methods, certain techniques, certain activities or apps, how to motivate students online, how to increase participation. And we didn't like participation, we wanted more engagement how to plan online lessons, how to assess. Everything was discussed, filtered, tested on teachers themselves, and then applied to Euroed uh, environment and modified if the case. It was hard work, challenging work, but it paid off. So now the last slide. Yes. So it's the impact and conclusions at the end of the day. So throughout our journey, we realize that change will stay here. So we'll be a constant of our times, is and will be a constant of our times. And that we teachers have to become agents of change. So get out of our comfort zone and prepare our students for changes teach them change skills, which will enable them to adapt, grab at any opportunity that change may offer and evolve, turn change to their advantage. That's exactly what we did. Change management is a critical success factor and it's important to uh, focus on it. So, now, if you were to ask me what is our most important gain, I would say our learning community. And it's our learning community of teachers, students and parents. This is visible in the higher prestige we have now in our city after all the lesson learned during the pandemic. So we got everybody and it, it was because we got everybody on board, inspiring leaders, reliable teams, colleagues, support. The measure of our success lies in numbers. And it's true, we have a rise in the number of students attending our school. So a big difference from September 2019, September 2020. We have new beneficiaries but also, most importantly, is the way our school is reflected in our students' and teachers' thoughts and opinions. 
So, Christy, will you play the video, please? I can't hear it. Before the pandemic. Oh, before the pandemic, uh, I thought that I know a lot about using technology at classroom, but uh, because I already had the smart board in the classroom, uh, the, my students uh, sometimes use the tablets um, in their classrooms. Uh, they had an informatic uh, hour, an informatic class, but uh, I found out that uh, I didn't know uh, anything because now I uh, found out that there are a lot of platform, platforms, softs, uh, applications that can help us to, to teach. So, you took part in EuroEd's efforts of adapting to online teaching during the pandemic. Tell us a few things which impressed you during the transition period. Uh, we had, uh, I think, uh, only one moment when we asked ourselves, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to stay um, close to our uh, students? Uh, we asked ourselves and then we moved. We uh, searched, we learned, we improved, we find the ways to, to, be, on, uh, to be with them. And that's why I think that we, we did it. We did it, we really did it, because uh, the parents were satisfied, the children were satisfied, and we were satisfied by our job. Okay, so how can you describe yourself now as a teacher after a year of experience in online and hybrid teaching? I feel closer to my students. I know that my students uh, are called alpha, uh, alpha generation, and they, uh, they are uh, digital native, so that's why uh, I learned to use technology and that's why I think that uh, their needs, I understand better their needs. Okay, thank you very much. Hello Dragos and Sofia, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, how did you feel during the lockdown when you were studying from home? I felt isolated because I didn't so see my, saw my uh, colleagues very much because it was online. I didn't see them a person in person a long time. Um, Sofia, how was online and hybrid uh, lessons for you? Activities, interaction, difficulty? Um, it was uh, okay. I, I was uh, excited at my first time and uh, I uh, was very happy. Um, and I actually uh, feel good when I'm online sometimes, and uh, this is uh, my opinion. Now, how do you feel um, the lessons have become? Are they more interesting, less interesting since the pandemic started? They are much more interesting because we make more interactive lessons and with much more virtual like things in it, in them. So, how do you think your teachers have changed? What do you think of their efforts? How do you see them now? They were looking a little bit more sad than now, and I was just happy they are now with me, and they can explain it much more better. And um, I think they were much more happy than they were in online. And okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay, so we have to add that the kids are just nine or ten years old. And uh, yeah, so we, uh, we had a great support in them because they were very open and willing to, to learn, to study and uh, be close to us. And they supported us all our steps in this interesting journey. Thank you.